Imagine your mind having a direct connection to the ultimate force of the universe. The ancient, all-powerful supreme force that created the Big Bang, and formed the stars, the galaxies, life as we know it. Okay. Imagine that your mind is connected directly to this force by an Invisi BLE, two-way radio channel. You place an order, and the force fills that order. It's as simple as that. Not much DIF parent than ordering a burger and fries at the local drive-thru. You don't have to prove or explain yourself. You don't have to beg, plead, politic, force, convince or do anything out of the ordinary. All you have to do is ask and be ready to receive. Imagine, then, the power of your mind. We see examples of this power all around us, but we usually choose to ignore it. Have you ever thought about calling someone and the next thing you know the phone rings and that person has called you? Have you ever known what someone was going to say before they said it? Have you ever seen someone and known instantly he or she was the person of your dreams, love at first sight? Have you ever been drawn or attracted to a new idea or a business concept for no earthly reason other than it really interested you? Many have experienced this connection to the guiding force of the universe. In fact, this is often the reason wealthy people give for their success. They feel guided by a sense of intuition, a hunch, an invisible connection. Once you start actualizing these secrets you, too, will share this experience. I sell advertising on a large website. It is the nature of my job to call very busy people and present to them the opportunity we have. Well, these people get 30 to 60 phone messages a day from folks just like me. No one can return all those messages and get any work done. So they usually do not answer the phone. When I call I get voicemail. I have called people three times a week for over a year before I got through to them. It is frustrating. Now, using this system, things have changed. I seldom call people more than a few times until I get through. I cannot tell you how often I have been engrossed in some activity at work when I get the clear message that I should call a specific prospect. At first I wrote down the name so that I would be sure and call later when I had finished what I was doing. That met with no real success. What did meet with incredible success was to call that person the moment I had the inspiration. Over and over again I would connect with my prospect. He or she would answer the phone, and I would have a chance to either sell or close. I have heard the same comment over and over again. I don't usually answer the phone, but for some reason I picked up and I'm glad I did. That is the power of the mind. The creative power of the mind is endless and the creative power of your mind can barely wait to give you all that you desire. I must tell you how I got my Mercedes. This story for there reinforces both the power of the mind and the way the system works. I wrote down that I wanted a Mercedes. I originally got a Volkswagen Jetta instead, which I always thought of as my little Mercedes. It was a stepping stone to the Mercedes I continued to want, an S-Class with leather seats and a big V8. So I wrote it down again, and again, and again. A whole year passed since I had purchased the Jetta. I had not yet seen a Mercedes appear in my driveway, and I decided to look into getting a cheaper loan rate on the VW. I went to my bank and asked about the possibility of refinancing my Jetta. My original loan was with the Auto Mobile Finance Company. The girl at the bank asked a series of questions, which, as I answered, she entered into a computer. She finally told me that if the loan went through I would save $24.03 a month, but the loan would go a year longer. I said no thanks and left. About a week later I received a letter at the office informing me that I had been turned down for a loan on my 1996 Volkswagen Jetta. Not only did I have no idea she was filling out an application, but they turned me down. I tried to ignore it but my own bank turned me down. How could they do this to me? Didn't I put all my money in their institution for them to make a profit on? Hey, it wasn't even a bank, it was a credit union. Weren't they supposed to help the members? Over the course of a month I developed a full head of steam. I called the president of our branch, 
who told me to call the man in charge of credit for the entire system. I did. He checked the application and said they were wrong. He would refinance the VW. I said, I don't want to refinance the VW. He said, what do you want? Without thinking I said, I want a loan on a new Mercedes. He thought for a minute and said, okay. We settled on an amount and that was it. Noon the next day my daughter and I went shopping. Within two hours we found exactly the car I wanted. It was on a BMW lot and had been there for two months. They were cutting the price to move it. Standard operating procedure. We made the deal, and within 24 hours of the phone call to my bank I had my Mercedes. Everyone at the BMW dealership, including those who did not get a commission, said that my car was the cleanest used car they had ever seen. That many people had come in and fallen in love with the car, but no one had pure chased it. They couldn't. It was my car. I had asked for that very car. I even created the financing up front. This was the easiest car deal I have ever made. All because of the power of the mind. Marilyn refers to this connection between your mind and the creative forces of the universe as the subconscious mind. Whatever you order, the subconscious creates. And herein lies the rub. Whatever you think, you order. This means that if you think poor thoughts, you will create poverty. If you think you will not have enough money to pay the bills, then you will not have enough money to pay the bills. If you worry about losing your job, you are as good as unemployed. If you say, we are not going to have enough money to take a vacation, enjoy a great Christmas, buy that house or pay that car payment, guess what? You are going to get exactly what you ask for, not enough. This is called living in lack. On the other hand, if you think rich thoughts, you will produce wealth. If you say all my bills are paid, they are. If you say I have a new car, a house, someone to share my life with, you do. If you think kindly of other people, if you think of strangers as friends and family, your life will be rich with love. If you love living today, if you treat your work as worship, you will grow and prosper. If you think about the goodness you want and believe you have it today, you will indeed become rich beyond your wildest dreams. Third Law of Prosperity The Universal Law of Cause and Effect What goes around comes around. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. People who live in glass houses should not throw stones. You have heard about the law of cause and effect all your life. You know it's true. What you put out comes back to haunt you or help you. What you might not have understood is how this law combines with the law of multiplication to dramatically impact your success. Please note the following diagram. I see it in my sleep. For more than two years, Practically every time I asked Marilyn a question she drew this diagram. Memorize it, because it is one of the keys to your success. You will undoubtedly notice that there is one line going out to others and many lines coming back to you. This is the law of multiplication. What you put out gets multiplied at least tenfold. If you put out positive energy, you get back a multitude of good. If you put out negative energy, you get back a multitude of grief and hardship. If you put out anger, you get back a sea of anger. If you put out happiness, you get back a storehouse of happiness. Whatever you put out into the world, you get back multiplied. Very simply, this means every time you say, write or think mean spirited, ugly, hurtful or hateful things about anyone you are putting out negative energy. You are creating for yourself exactly what you do not want. Since what you put out comes back to you multiply, your negative energy becomes an order to the universe asking for a heavy load of trouble to be dumped directly on your head. You know this is true. You've heard it your whole life. You've heard it so much, in fact, it sometimes sounds trite or melodramatic. Nevertheless, it is as true today as when your mother first said it. When you talk bad about someone else, you are only hurting yourself. A friend of mine who is normally in excellent health called one afternoon in the grip of great pain and suffering. She felt that she had very little reason to live anymore, that her life was horrible. 
She said that her son had fallen from his motor scooter and broken his collarbone. Her mate and she were fighting constantly. Her cat had marked her bedroom for the third time that week. She was too sick to go to work, but she needed the money because her daughter's college tuition was due. A bill that was rightfully the obligation of her ex-husband. The blankety blank blank blank. Finally, we got to the source of the problem. She was furious at her ex-husband and had been for a long time. She was thinking and speaking of him in less than complimentary terms. She was creating an order for incredible pain and suffering for herself. Once she recognized that she was creating her own misfortune and disease, she changed her attitude and her life brightened immediately. She decided that her ex was doing the best he could. She decided it was her responsibility to deal with him in the best way she could. She decided to expect nothing from him and always work through her lawyer when it involved the kids. She protected herself by giving goodness out to the world. Now, in this example, negative energy returned quickly to the sender. In other cases it can take years before that pain comes back to you. The only thing you can be sure of is that it will come back. The opposite is also true. If you send out loving, kind, magnanimous and caring words, thoughts and deeds, you will receive that goodness back multiplied. What you give is what you get. No doubt about it. Sending out negative energy is a bad habit. This is something we all have to work on every day. It is entirely too easy to get angry at other drivers, neighbors, bosses, friends or loved ones. It is too easy to call them names. Horrible names you really do not mean. It is entirely too easy to think poorly of someone because of their economic, racial, religious or ethnic background. It is too easy to hate people because they are different. It is too easy to let DIF forenses override similarities, to shun and deride that which is outside of that with which you are comfortable. And what good does it do? It only hurts you. You are simply setting yourself up for a big negative payback. Besides we are not here to judge. We are here to get rich. Change your attitudes. Develop new habits. Think good thoughts. You can do this. I did. Every time you say something negative about yourself or anyone else, stop and forgive yourself, then correct your thinking. Allow only good and kind thoughts to enter your mind or leave your mouth. Imagine yourself sowing golden seeds of love and kindness everywhere you go. The result is a harvest rich beyond your wildest dreams. Do not turn this page until you are prepared. You must have a 79 cent wide ruled, spiral notebook to continue. If you do not have one, stop right now and go get one. Writing in the notebook is a vital part of using this system of obtaining wealth. You cannot do this work without a 79 cent wide ruled, spiral notebook. Do not try. Do not read on thinking you will do it later. Stop and go get a 79 cent wide ruled, spiral notebook. Now, make sure you have the privacy and time, at least an hour, to complete the next chapter. It is better that you are not disturbed by friends, family, co-workers or pressing engagements while you do your work. Learning is work, and you are learning a new system. As simple as all this may seem, you need quiet space and privacy to continue. It's up to you, but as my father used to say, a job worth doing is worth doing right. Please note, the cost of 79 cent wide ruled, spiral notebooks seems to vary with your location, time of year and personal preferences. Just yesterday I paid 89 cents for a 79 cent notebook. I have paid as low as 39 cents during back to school sales. And one of our close friends recently spent $17 for a 79 cent notebook. Pretty cover and all. I'm still smarting from those 89 cent notebooks I bought yesterday. But what the heck, I can afford it. I am, after all, rich beyond my wildest dreams. I am. I am. I am. Chapter 7. What do you want? Do you want a new car? Do you want a new house? Do you want a new job? Do you want a loving, caring relationship? Do you want to live your life in lack? 
Or do you want to live your life rich beyond your wildest dreams? Whatever you want you can have. It is just as easy to live rich as it is to live poor. The DIF Ferentz is you. All you have to do is decide what you want and you can have it. I am about to tell you how. Are you in a quiet place? Are you in a private, secure place? Can you give this project an hour of your time without interruption? If your answers are yes, let's get started. You are about to take the first step to a prosperous new life. Start by taking out your 79 cent wide ruled, spiral notebook. Open your notebook to the inside cover, and in big letters, write the following. All this by divine right, divine inspiration, divine intervention, divine timing and with good for all concerned. The reason you write that statement is to cover your backside. You may desire something that God does not desire for you. You ask for the things you prefer to have, and the universe decides. The bottom line is, if you are supposed to have something, you'll get it. If not, you wouldn't want it anyway. Important. Skip the first page of your notebook. You will write something here later. Turn to the second page instead. Write on only one side of a page. Skip every other line. The reason you write on only one side of a page is to make use of the law of abundance, which says you have an unlimited supply, inexhaustible resources. There is more than enough paper. By not skipping lines and using both sides of the page you are reflecting someone who has money problems or meager resources. Is this what you what? Of course not. You are rich. You have at your fingertips all the resources you could ever use. Expand your thinking. Write on one side of the page only. Page 2 is actually the second sheet of paper. On the top of this second sheet of paper write my list. Now, make a list. Write down a list of everything you want as though you already have it. Use the present tense or the past tense. I have a new car. I had a wonderful evening at the opera. I have a loving, caring, romantic relationship. It does not matter if you have done something like this before. Make the list. Do it exactly as shown. This is an important part of this system for creating wealth. Be careful not to write that you want something or that you will have something. If you write, I want a new car, your subconscious hears that you want to want a new car. If you say, I will have a new car, you are saying that you might desire this sometime in the future, but not now. The creative force of the universe does not hear that you want to have a new car. So tell your subconscious what it wants to hear. I have a new car. In the beginning this was difficult for me. I felt like I was lying or cheating somehow. I did not have a new car, but I wanted one. Why say, I have one? The answer is you are creating something. Something tangible for you to use, have or experience in the present. If you create it in the future, you will never get the chance to enjoy your desire because, as we all know, tomorrow never comes. By writing down what you want in the present or past tense, you are telling the universe what you want to have in your posse scion at this exact point in time. The universe then gives you what you want now, in the present moment, so you can enjoy it now. The universe requires very simple, direct and literal descriptions. You are writing an order. Be clear and concise. K-I-S-S. Keep it simple, Sally. I have a big screen TV. I had a good time at the theater. I have a new chair. This will get you what you want when you want it. Think of the words want and will as code words that tell the universe to wait. To cancel your order. These words tell the production line to shut down and take a break. With a little experience, you will feel comfortable using only the present tense and the past tense to describe your desire. Now, we are going to start your list. I am not there with you, and I do not know exactly what you want. Hopefully you do. I will assume you want certain things. I will assume you want a new car, for example. If you are absolutely opposed to having a new car, pretend. You can always tear out the page later and throw it away. Start writing a list of what you want. 
write one desire on every other line and only on one side of the paper. Give yourself plenty of room to create. These notebooks are cheap. I go through several a month. By following this system you are asking God to allow you to live in abundance. Start now. Skip lines. Write on one side only. You have plenty of room. Here is an example of what a list might look like. My list. 1. I have a beautiful new car or like new car. 2. I am now living in my new home. 3. I have a new sofa. 4. I am slim, trim and healthy. 5. I love my new job. 6. I have many new friends. 7. I have season tickets to the Lakers games. 8. I have a wonderful love relationship. 9. I have a fantastic sex life. 10. My children, parents are safe and protected. 11. My bodily organs work correctly. 12. I have an active social life. 13. I have a large, dependable, steady income. 14. I have new sheets for my bed. 15. I am on a cruise vacation to Hawaii. This list can go on forever. Make it as long as you like. In fact, write until you feel that you have exhausted every desire you have ever had. Write down businesses you want to own. Write down the things you want to do. You should even write down the little things like I have renewed my driver's license or I have returned my library books. Write down how you want your life to be, the parameters. Always and only the parameters. Do not get too specific yet. Just write down what you want in simple, literal terms. Keep the adjectives to a minimum. We'll get into the details later. For now, paint with broad brush strokes. Draw the outline. Define the objects of your desire in the most Gen Errol terms. It is a good idea to write I have a beautiful new or like new car. This gives the universe the opportunity to get you a really great deal. You might, for example, get a great deal on a one-month-old car. Or maybe a car that someone bought and never drove. The first time I did this I wrote down I have a new Mercedes Benz. It is green. I did this more as a wish than a real belief. I did not think it was possible for me to buy a new Mercedes Benz, but I really wanted one, so I wrote it down. What I got was new and green, and the first step to getting a big Mercedes Benz. Within six weeks I bought a brand new green Volkswagen Jetta, right off the dealer's lot. I had been driving an old clunker with loud, squeaky brakes and no muffler. To me the Jetta was a dream come true. Later, my German mechanic friend, Wolfgang, said, Ja got da Jetta. Dis is a little Mercedes, ya? Ja? What a confirmation. I really did get what I'd asked for. Breathing life into what you want begins with this simple list. Write down what you want. Next, visualize what you want. Close your eyes, and in your mind see yourself possessing what you've written down. You must have a clear vision of what you want. Then, feel the joy of having what you want. Imagine what it feels like to enjoy having the things you've asked for. Get enthusiastic about having what you want. This is extremely important. As Benjamin Franklin said, nothing great comes without enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is the kinetic bond that gives cohesion to your desires. Writing your list changes dreams into requests or prefer answers. Visualization changes your requests into solid hors d'oeuvres, compelling desires. But it is enthusiasm that puts these desires into your heart. And it is only in your heart that the universe looks for your orders, your desires. Do all three things and you will have what you want. In fact, this is the secret to getting anything you want. Anything. And it is not just a good idea, it is the law. List plus visualize plus enthusiasm equals getting what you want. Start with your car. Write down exactly what you want. Close your eyes and create in your mind a clear image of what your car looks like. See your car in the color you want and from every angle. Visualize yourself behind the steering wheel. Imagine the feel and smell of the leather. See yourself driving along your favorite highway. 
Experience in your mind the power of acceleration and the wind in your hair. Now, feel the overwhelming joy you receive taking delivery of your new car. Savor the feeling of excitement you get driving your new car home for the first time. Do what it takes to make this car real for you. Go to a dealership and test drive the car you have asked for. Get excited about this vehicle. This is your car. Love it. Want it. Own it. Put images and enthusiasm into the rest of your list. In your mind, walk through the home you want. Smell the fresh paint and new carpet. See each and every room. Look at every angle. Imagine this home filled with your prized personal possessions. Take this a step further and get picked tourish of the things you want inside your home. Go look at refrigerators, wallpaper or pool supplies. Do what it takes to make what you have asked for real in your mind. If it is a relationship you have asked for, cut out a picture from a magazine of a couple in a loving pose. Look at wedding rings. Try some on. Go to weddings. Whatever it is that you want. Touch it, see it, feel it. Get excited about having it. Put the things you want in your heart. They are yours, all yours. Now, let go. Detach yourself from what you want. You still want it, but you have given the universe power over its creation and acquisition. You do not earn it. You do not have to deserve it. You do not have to accomplish, achieve or fulfill anything. Your job is to ask and wait. So let it go. Detach. Turn your back. Let the creator do his part. Besides, you have more paperwork to do. There are still a few details remaining for you to get rich beyond your wildest dreams. Please note. You do not have to believe any of this. Not one single word. I don't care. The universe doesn't care. Nobody cares. You can believe all this or not. You can take what you want and disregard the rest. It is up to you entirely. Because it doesn't matter what you believe. Do the work described here. Follow this system for gaining wealth and you will prosper. Period. The laws work regardless of what you believe. Chapter 8. Detailing your wealth. Again, make sure you have plenty of undisturbed time available before you begin this chapter. Creating something by using your mind demands concentration and EF fort. You have already written the list of things you want in your life. These are really preferences. Things you would prefer to have. The universe then decides when, how and even if, you get them. Now, you are going to detail that list. Once you have written the things you want, turn ahead a few pages, maybe 10 or 12. You are leaving room to add more to your list later. At the top of that page, write a subject, like my new car. Then, describe in detail the car you want. Remember to describe the car as if you already own it. Limit each line to one description. Skip every other line. Utilize the law of abundance. Write on one side of the paper only. Use as many pages as necessary for every subject. Skip a page or two between subjects. You may need to add more detail later. You're rich, act like it. You are creating superlative wealth. The cost of a spiral notebook is insignificant. Incidentally, there is a specific reason you put only one description on a line. Each line is an order. The more complex the order, the more difficult it is for the universe to fulfill all the elements at exactly the same moment. When Marilyn first started writing down her desires, she wrote, I have a new beige purse with matching beige shoes. She was working in a craft store in a small community outside of Chicago. At lunch she happened into a shoe store and found exactly the beige shoes she wanted, but no purse. She bought the shoes and hurried back to her store without getting any lunch. She had the anxious feeling she was taking too long a lunch break by looking at shoes. She no more than walked into the store when a woman came in selling purses. Yes, there was the beige purse that matched her shoes exactly. She bought the purse about five minutes after buying the shoes. See, the universe had to deliver her entire order at one time. She had to miss lunch for that to happen, 
and we are talking about rather easy to find items. What if you wanted a like new? Red Isuzu Rodeo with the fancy interior, a 20-disc CD changer, high-performance tires and the special chrome wheels? On one line that could take a while. Put each detail on a separate line, and God can deliver what you want faster and easier. Maybe you get the CD changer and the tires after you buy the car. Also, some of the specifics you write down may not be what the universe wants you to have. These are only preferences. You have already asked that it only be for your highest good. And that your requests be guided by divine right, divine inspiration, divine timing and divine intervention with good for all concerned. Let the universe decide which details it delivers. Write a single description on each line. Be as specific as you want. Write as many descriptions as you want. Your list will look something like this. My new car. 1. I have a beautiful new or like new car. 2. My new car is black. 3. My new car has a 12-cylinder engine. 4. My car has a leather interior. 5. My car is a Mercedes-Benz. 6. My Mercedes is an S600. 7. It has cup holders. 8. It has a CD player. 9. It has an AM, FM radio. 10. It has an excellent speaker system. 11. It has a 20-disc CD changer. 12. My car has a lumbar adjustable driver's seat. 13. My new car has parchment color interior. Write down what you want exactly as I have written it here. Certainly, you may change the description to suit your desires. That is the whole idea of this exercise. Make it work for you. Get what you want. The following descriptions are very helpful, and I suggest you use them. You are describing more than a car. You are describing the conditions of your life. Do you want to use your house payment money to buy this car? Of course not. You are not looking for a burden. You want a pleasant, carefree experience with your new vehicle. Describe as clearly as possible the circumstances surrounding your situation. And avoid making limitations on the universe. 14. My new car is easily paid for. 15. My car is completely insured. 16. The insurance is easily paid for. 17. My car runs great. 18. My car has an excellent warranty. 19. Everyone who rides in my car is safe and protected at all times. 20. Only those who are for my highest and best good may ride in my car. 21. My new car is seeking me as I am seeking it, and the law of attraction brings us together with love and understanding. 22. I have the correct car for me. Ask the universe for all the good you can imagine. Protect yourself and your loved ones. The more specific you are, the better. Your job is to define the parameters of what you want so God can fill the order as precisely and quickly as possible, as in the illustration on page 55. Now that you have described the car you want, turn to a new page and detail a new subject, like my home. Continue detailing new subjects until you have detailed everything on your list of desires from Chapter 7. Some detail lists will be long, some will be short. As you detail, you might think of new ideas for your list of desires. Go back and add them. You are detailing your own new, rich life. Ask for everything you want. More is always better. Below I have included two more sample lists. Have fun. You can have whatever your mind desires. Be sure to leave room on big items like a home. You may want to go back later to add detail for things like wallpaper and fixtures. My home. 1. I am now living in my new home. 2. I own my home. 3. It is a house. 4. It has 5 bedrooms. 5. It has 3 bathrooms. 6. It has a beautiful swimming pool. 7. The swimming pool is heated. 8. The heat for my swimming pool is easily paid for. 9. My new home is large and roomy. 10. My new home is a pleasant drive from my office. 11. 
my new home is fully insured. 12. Only those who are for my highest good may come into my home. 13. Everyone who is in my home is safe and protected at all times. 14. My new home is easily paid for. 15. My new home is seeking me as I am seeking it, and the law of attraction brings us together with love and understanding. 16. It is the correct home for me. 17. My new home is mine by divine right. My couch. 1. I have a beautiful new couch. 2. I have a matching love seat. 3. My new couch is light in color. 4. It has a modern, attractive design. 5. It is comfortable for me to sit on. 6. It supports my back comfortably. 7. It is easily paid for. 8. My new couch is seeking me as I am seeking it, and the law of attraction brings us together with love and understanding. 9. It is the correct couch for me. You undoubtedly noticed that we included one long parameter in each list. It is seeking me as I am seeking it. Dot, dot, quote. This is a very important parameter that we always use. It helps break through all the clatter of your search and makes finding whatever it is you want a lot simpler. It helps cut down on delivery time. Sometimes it makes the difference between getting what you want and missing it altogether. Recently, Penelope, my oldest daughter, graduated from college and moved into an apartment of her own. My wife and I decided to give her a bed. I asked my daughter to write down what she wanted. You cannot write down what you want other people to have. This is absolutely against spiritual law. She included items 8 and 9. It is seeking me as I am seeking it. And it is the correct bed for me. Here is why they are included. Penelope and I went to every department store and bed store we could find. We found several good beds, but none that we felt compelled to buy. Now, I am not a big shopper. I will look around some, but this became a month-long search. It got so bad, I finally told her she had to decide. I was tired of shopping. In fact, I stopped caring if we ever found her bed. She agreed. So instead of more shopping one Sunday, I fell asleep in front of a football game and Penelope went to her boyfriend's house. When she got there, she read the Sunday paper and found a sale on beds at Sears. We had never considered Sears, but it was a great sale. We went the next day. We each took a turn lying on one of the beds. Neither of us had any doubt. This was the bed. It was a better bed than any we had seen previously and it was on sale for several hundred dollars less than we would have paid elsewhere. How did we find her bed? We stopped caring if we ever found it. This is detachment. This is all about how you feel. We felt that we already had the bed, but at the same time we did not care if we had the bed. Two things to remember here. First, since the correct bed was seeking us, we were not allowed to buy until we found the right one. Second, we did not find the bed until we stopped caring. This is part of detachment, which we cover in more detail later in Chapter 11. Not until we grew tired of shopping were we detached enough for the universe to show us where to look. What a small price to pay for getting rich beyond your wildest dreams. Chapter 9. Defining your relationships. What good is having a lot of stuff if you go through life alone? Even the most introverted people I know need friends. We are social and sexual beings. We need friends in whom to confide. Business and intellectual associations to stimulate our minds and intimate, tender relationships to soothe our souls. We need a partner to love and a family to cherish. Without these all-important relationships, life can seem a little empty. So if you are rich beyond your wildest dreams, why not have it all? Relationships are as much a part of our success and happiness as a new car or a Bo Tiffel, safe home. You deserve to have a wealth of personal relationships. Be my guest. It certainly is your right. No one is perfect. No matter how spiritual, clever or rich individuals may be, they are not perfect. This is an imperfect world, and we are part of that world. We, too, are I am perfect. 
We make mistakes, we grow, we learn. This is the very reason we are in this life. We are here to learn such things as patience, charity, love, kindness, understanding and tolerance. Which means we all have plenty of work to do on relationships. By writing down what you want in your relationships, you will attract and keep the kind of relationships that lead to a happy, loving, prosperous life. We might as well start with the big one, your mariage. Detail the marriage you want. Certainly this relationship deserves a few minutes for planning. Whether you are married or single, male or female, write down a description of the marriage you want right now. Open the 79 cent notebook and write down these examples. Remember, this is an exercise, so if you do not like what is written here, you can always change it. Make it apply to you. Be specific, because you just might get exactly what you ask for. At the top of the page write my marriage. My marriage. 1. We are totally compatible in every area. 2. We respect each other tremendously. 3. We are on the same wavelength about marriage. 4. We have a monogamous relationship. He is faithful to me, as I am to him. 5. It is a prosperous marriage. 6. He is financially responsible, i.e., to the family. 7. He supports me in everything I do. 8. The love between the two of us is more than I could ever have imagined. 9. He gives me gifts at the most unexpected times. 10. He gives me freedom to be me, as I do him. 11. We are great friends. 12. We are spiritually compatible. 13. Children arrive at the appropriate times, our choosing. 14. All the children are healthy. 15. We have incredible sex and enjoy each other in this capacity. 16. We are like-minded. 17. We have tons and tons of fun together. 18. We have many wonderful surprises in our marriage. 19. We take fun vacations together. 20. We have a happy family. 21. I am with the correct person for me. 22. I am married to my divine complement. 23. The marriage I am seeking is seeking me, and the law of attraction brings us together in love and understanding. If you are more comfortable with someone having the same cultural, racial or ethnic background as you do, then add these details to your list. That's fine. This is your life. Choose what you want. Besides, these are only preferences. God has creative control. Here's something else to think about when writing down relationships. You must at all times remain an individual. You cannot write down preferences for someone else. You cannot make your life dependent upon someone else or them upon you. Just as two trees must remain separate and distinct, you and your partner must each remain strong and firmly rooted as individuals. If one tree leans too heavily upon the other, neither tree will grow properly. The same is true of people. Once you give up your individuality, you become weak. This weakness can break you, your partner, your offspring and your marriage. Never write things like, John loves me. Jane quits her job to go with me to Atlanta. Or, my son gets a steady job with benefits. These kinds of things are not yours to ask for. Maybe John is supposed to leave your life for you to have an even better part N.E.R. Maybe your life with Jane becomes dark and unhappy because she always regrets quitting her job. And maybe she would have been transferred to Atlanta anyway. You don't know what the future holds. Maybe your son will find his success in a cover band while the job you want him to have leads to a life of failure and despair. What kind of a fun relationship would that create? When you try to guide someone's life for them, you weaken them and you.